Duncan Hunter is a member of the House Armed Services Committee and is an Iraq and Afghanistan war veteran, the mother of one of the soldiers killed in Afghanistan over the weekend, who found herself without the benefit, lives in his de district. Representative Hunter, good to see you again tonight. And so first let me ask you whether you agree that there is some evidence that the withholding of these benefits may have been intentional by the Pentagon, by those advising the Pentagon, which we now know included Eric Holder's DOJ, and that the White House Office of Management and Budget was also informed days ago before this came out to the rest of the world uh, that this was going to be a problem and, as far as we know, did not solve it. Hey, Megan, it was definitely intentional. At, at some point in the Department of Defense, somebody looked somebody else in the eye and said, do not give these families the death benefit. Even though I just found out today that the most likely legal interpretation of, of what we did does pay these death benefits, sure, there might have been some ambiguity and, and the lawyers could o argue over it, but Chuck Hagel, the Secretary of Defense, or the President of the United States, need to have the moral fortitude to say, pay these guys. Do it. I don't care if it's ambiguous. Let's ask for forgiveness later. Pay them. Because who would have challenged it? They, who who would have challenged opposite. it? If they Nobody would have challenged because it. Just so our viewers know what happened, we were headed toward the shutdown and the members of Congress foresaw that there might be an issue with paying our military, so they passed the Pay Our Military Act, and that act specifically said, uh, let's pay, uh, it authorizes sums necessary to provide pay and allowances. Well, the, the Department of Defense has a list of what, what's included in pay and allowances, and specifically on there is death benefits. So there was a good faith belief that this, the death gratuity as it's called, would be covered by the act you guys passed on the eve of the shutdown. Once DOD conferred with DOJ, the Department of Justice sits down with the Department of Defense and says, nope, not covered. Did anybody call you? Did anybody contact Congress and say you didn't you weren't explicit enough? There was a loophole and our veterans are about to get the short end. What are we going to do about it? No, nobody contacted us because I think now that they wanted to do this on purpose. And because we have civilian control of the military, the Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel, should have said, get this done. We're not going to stand for it. I think Chuck Hagel needs to, to uh, think about offering his resignation over this because he's the one who's at the top of this food chain and broke the sacred trust with, with these families. The, these military families are not pawns to be played with by this administration to make political points. And that's exactly what happened in, in this situation. Chuck Hagel needs to take a look in the mirror and say, did I, did I do my job as the Secretary of Defense and as the guardian of, of that trust with these military families and the American people that I do my job? And, and I would look him in the eye and say, sir, you did not do your job. You did not do what you were supposed to do as the secre uh, Secretary of Defense. And Mr. President, the President of the United States, again, could have fixed this with a pen stroke about nine days ago, whenever they uh, first found out about it, he, he didn't do it either. He used our military families as pawns, and uh, again, it's embarrassing and despicable of our, mili of our civilian leaders of the military to do this. Well, and now, no, and now, no and, and, the military and what doesn't happened? trust our civilian leadership. What happened after this came out was Ken Fisher of the Fisher House steps in and says, look, I, I'm going to step in and I'm going to help these families and tell Congress and, and the White House, everybody can get, get their act together. And so you guys in the, in the House uh, representatives say, Look, with all due respect, let's try to fix it the right way. You pass a bill unanimously saying, right. let's authorize these funds. The Senate, Again. Harry Reid, says that's a gimmick. That's for show. We, we, we don't need to act on that in the Senate. The White House says the same thing. And then both of them, Harry Reid and the White House, reverse themselves within hours. Here they are earlier today. And so this issue is largely moot. It's clear the action on this legislation is now just for show here. And you don't need legislation. Uh, it does mean that we don't need legislation. Will the president veto that legislation? Or? Again, I don't think, uh, uh, first of all, I, the legislation is not necessary. Our, our, our view has been that this piecemeal funding is, again, a gimmick. And yet, and yet they did it. The Senate passed it and the, and the president signed it about half an hour ago. Your thoughts? Again, Megan, think about this. Somebody in the Department of Defense looked at somebody else in the eye, probably Secretary Hagel or somebody right under him, and said, do not pay these military families. Do not do it. I don't, I don't care if, if we could do it. Do not do it. And, and by doing that, they advocated their authority and, and their ability and responsibility to be in, in that position that, that they were supposed to serve in. They just gave that up. I don't want them there anymore. I want them gone. And uh, I would put somebody like Jim Mattis, the old commandant, or the, or the uh, excuse me, 
an old general in, in the uh, uh, Marine Corps who re retired. They need somebody like him in DOD to be doing this yeah. stuff because you need someone there who looks out for the, the best interests of the military and their families. And yeah. right now, obviously, we don't have that. Understood. Uh, Congressman, thank you for being here. Thank you. We're joined now by Pete Hexeff. He's CEO of Concerned Veterans for America and an Iraq and Afghanistan war veteran. And Pete, I want to pick up where we left off with sure. the Congressman about Hagel, because he, now you heard Congressman Hunter saying he should step down. Our own Bill O'Reilly uh, called for that last night. Far from stepping down.